I'd love to look at the clear link between um, what's going on in the mouth and, and why that's so heavily linked to cardiovascular disease. Yes. So actually this is something that, that you kind of also learn in dentistry that, that the, the bacteria in your mouth can affect your heart. Mm. So what do you learn as a dentist is if somebody had a, uh, like a previous heart issue, for an example, an endocarditis, endocarditis, you know what that is? Like a inflammation of your endocard. Um, it's always strongly correlated to the bacteria. So these patients that had this previously, they always need to get an antibiotic. That's common sense or that's common teaching in the industry because of the bacteria mia. Like if you, for example, do just an oral cleaning procedure, they need to take an antibiotic before because it's clear that through cleaning these teeth, you stir up more bacteria that lurked into your, like, your biofilm and they directly go to your heart. So that's quite clear. And it's not that far away, actually. So I think the concept of biological dentistry is basically that the mouth is part of your body because we're not trained like this in university. It's, you know it from every movie. The dentist is not a real doctor. It's like in Hangover or whatever, it's always like, ah, oh, he's just a dentist. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. And it is a little bit like that because obviously we study medicine as a dentist. It's just a specialty and we, uh, we separate a little bit because we, had, we have so much training when it comes to our uh, craftsmanship, but we study the whole dentistry uh, and the whole medicine, but it still seems that the mouth is just outside body. And this is how we treat teeth. So how is it possible, for example, that we allow to place super toxic materials in your body? It's only possible because regulatory states that a filling, for example, is just a device that lays on top of your teeth. It's not really in your body. That's how FDA declares an amalgam filling or silver filling. And, and um, then they can justify that it's 50% of mercury and it's highly toxic because the device, you don't have to, you don't have to do a toxicology report on it because it's not, it's not really on your body, in your body. It's just a device like this one here. And yeah. it's not... Yeah, and this is a little bit of a flawed thinking. So the mouth is part of your body. It makes sense, right? And obviously everything you do in your body, think about a hormone. If you go to an endocrinologist and you see you have, let's say you have a testosterone deficiency, then he will, in, he will maybe give you a topical or injectable TRT treatment. You inject, I don't know where you inject it, into any muscle. But obviously, this hormone will not just work here locally on the muscle. It will work in the whole body. So imagine you have an inflammation on your tip of your tooth. Do you think it's only there? Or maybe does this inflammation spread? Do you maybe have high cytokine load because of tons of inflammation in your mouth? It's actually, it's super logical. And but it's so foundational um, work. And it's not trained to intertwine or link all these different modalities like Tons of functional medicine doctors know about oral health, but don't really look into your mouth. So you hear people talk about heavy metal detoxification. And then I see that they still have melting fillings in their mouth, even in our field, which is health. Like the whole health optimization or health space. I see so many people running around with like sources of toxicity and inflammation daily, 24 seven in their mouth. They try tons of biohacks. They, they invest in the most expensive um, technique or machines for at home use to biohack their health where they haven't even looked into their mouths. And that might be the biggest trigger for the stress. And what I learned in the last couple of years is, and from good doctors actually, that we are living in an epidemic of chronic disease. You can see right now it's a pandemic of the unhealthy, if you want like that, and metabolic uh, metabolic problems, whatever you know. It's a chronic uh, chronic disease, and for example, Dr. Dietrich Klingard or a lot of the, or Thomas Rao from Paracelsus Clinic, they always said at least sixty percent of all disease starts in your mouth because there is something we call oral interference, problems that you as a patient probably don't even feel you don't see and it's not trained that way but like on a deeper level inflammations toxicity will start from there because you had reparation done and um, this can lead to all the problems we're talking about 
insulin resistance, oxidative stress, hormone problems. There are so many studies. Like, you know, for example, if you have a higher level of IL-6, interleukin-6 cytokine, it's linked to low growth hormone. Other people will inject growth hormone. You know what I mean? And they didn't even look into their mouth. They start uh, chelation therapy while they're having amalgam fillings in their mouth. That's, that's so insane from a medical perspective, but that's how it works.